This is Theology Refresh, Desiring God's podcast for pastors and Christian leaders, and we're privileged to be joined by Lyle Dorsett here today, professor at Beeson, and we have a significant topic to discuss with Lyle here, and that is Christians and dealing with loss, pain, and tragedy. Uh, Lyle, first would you tell us, uh, why does this, why is it so close to home, this topic, for you? This, this topic is close to home for a variety of reasons, but uh, the, the biggest one that brought it home was the death. My wife and I lost our 10-year-old daughter. Mm. Um, and when she was 10, she was so healthy and beautiful and got sick one night and died the next morning. Mm. And these things are just, uh, you know, I told God a hundred times, God, if I were in charge, I wouldn't have done it this way. We had a lot of gratuitous comments from people who said, oh, God needed one more little angel in heaven. I go, oh, no, he's got all he needs. We had one daughter, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no, finally you, uh, you have to say, are we going to give this over to God? We, we were distressed to learn in the wake of all this that over 80% of the marriages of people who lose children end up divorcing. Mm-hmm. And... Mary and I learned that statistic just a few months into this, but we were determined that wasn't going to happen to us by the grace of God. And and he, but I think there's a tendency in a loss like that to keep the spouse back. I'm not going to be hurt again. I'm going to, I'm not going to get close to you. Or maybe there's blame. Well, she wouldn't have died if you'd have done something better or whatever. So, but that was, that was a huge loss for us. So I think one way we could help our, our listeners here, uh, before we talk about how a, a counsel you'd have for pastors and leaders in, in helping others, how about for pastors and leaders themselves going through times of loss, tragedy, and pain, uh, how would you counsel them in getting themselves through that spiritually and emotionally? Well, I, I'll tell you, maybe I can give you just a picture of one of the things that helped Mary and me a lot. I remember when we stepped out of the intensive care room when Erica had died, and we stepped out, and my parents and a lot of people from our church were out in the hallway. They'd been praying, and a woman whom we didn't know very well at all came up and grabbed my wife and said, Mary, I have a verse for you. And I'll tell you, at that time, if you don't already have a verse, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're not going to hear it from somebody, Mm -hmm. uh, even a close friend. uh, But Mary was very kind and listened to her and thanked her. But that night, with a death like that, it's like with so many traumatic things, you're numb for a while. And she died in the morning, and afternoon and evening were, were... we're numb. It's like a wound. You, you know, the nerves are dead. But we went to bed finally around midnight, and we tried to sleep. At about two in the morning, I was awake, and I reached over and grabbed Mary's hand. I said, "Are you awake?" She said, "Yes." And I said, "This isn't a bad dream. It really happened." Mm. And all of a sudden, we're saying, "She's really gone." Mm. And I said, "Mary." Jesus told us in John 14, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll come to you. Call on me. And I said, let's ask the Comforter to help us. Mm -hmm. So we held hands and we prayed. It doesn't sound very profound, but we did. And the Comforter came. Mm -hmm. It didn't end our pain. It wasn't that she was restored or anything, but he comforted us. And we had the anchor in the reality that Christ is real. He's alive, and we're going to see her again. Yes. And uh, that maybe doesn't work for all people, but it did for us. But by his grace, we already had faith. and We knew him personally. We knew where she was living. Uh, but that's what we did. That was the kind of the practical side and then we just had to live day by day and sometimes I got angry especially with the doctor that had refused to see her for 12 hours Mm -hmm. uh, saying she had nothing but a cold Mm -hmm. had to pray to forgive him Mm -hmm. did you find as you walked through this with your wife uh, how different people's experiences of suffering can be and how 
God has people in different places and leads them in different ways. Well, there's some some things that are that will be the same. Uh, are was that a lesson to to take from it? Did you you and your wife suffer in the same ways, or how did you? Well, that's a good question. I I think we. I think in some ways it was much harder on my wife. And I, I don't know how to explain that, but in this era when everybody says men and women are no different, when a woman carries a baby for nine months, there's an, there's an intimacy there. And my wife was a stay-at-home mother and she invested in our children and the loss was, I still had a, had a job. I had to go back to the university. I had to go back to teaching. And so I would get diverted with the pressures of work. And she had to deal with things at another level. And I think in a way it was harder for her, but she handled it very well. But she did go into a dark night of the soul for a season. And what made it worse, she had died. The, our daughter died. I'd accepted it a position to move to Wheaton College in Illinois in December. We were going to move then that summer. Erica died in February. Hmm. So we're leaving our church, we're leaving all of our friends, we're leaving our hmm. base of support to move to a new environment. I'm going into a new job hmm. with a challenge. And Mary is there with a daughter who's gone and a son who is a senior in high school who's doing his best to say he doesn't need a mother. So she's she's out there. I mean, she came through it, but it was the grace of God and, and a couple of uh, dear friends who really ministered to her and walked with her. These mm -hmm. things aren't easy. Yes. But that said, where Mary suffered and where I've suffered, we've been able to minister to people who've lost children mm -hmm. in a way that other people can't. Because mm -hmm. uh, we, had, we had people, I had a, a man, we were trying to witness to a couple in Denver, Colorado, we were living in Boulder at the time our daughter died. And the man was a physician. His, they had a son who died when he was 11. My wife led his wife to Christ. And we'd have dinner together quite a bit and talk. And I kept trying to witness to Denny. And he one night said to me, I don't want to hear anything more from you about your God. He let my 11-year-old son die. I don't, you don't know what I've gone through. Don't tell me about your loving God. When he learned that Erica had died that morning, he canceled his surgery for that day. He and his wife were there. Mm. And I, they wanted to help us. But also, uh, he knew, I think he wanted to know, what are you gonna do with this? Mm. Because now he knew I'm walking in the same path. Yeah. And we were able to minister to them in a way we couldn't have without that loss. Yes. Are there, uh, as you and your wife, walked through this and continue to um, have there been ways uh, in which others have ministered to you that have been especially helpful or vice versa there have indeed in fact uh, we had when we moved to Illinois there were people that just came and ministered to us and were very loving and caring but there were also people in the church we went to that had, there were two families in particular that had lost children one family, Joseph Bailey, some of you might know his name, he's written a lot of books, but Joe Bailey and his wife buried two or three children, mm -hmm. and they were in the church, and they ministered to us. Mm -hmm. And then there was uh, Jim and Martha Reepsom who were in the church, ministered to us, they had buried a child. And people like that can talk to you and help you because they've been there. Mm -hmm. And other people are very helpful and mean well, but they haven't been there. Yeah. So uh, counsel you'd have for pastors, Christian leaders, in, uh, in church settings, in helping people in their flock who are going through trauma, significant loss and tragedy. Uh, words of counsel. For One word of counsel I would have, if, if you're a pastor in a church, a leader in a church, would be try to get Try to find people in your congregation or in your range of influence, Christian people who have experienced this, mm -hmm. this kind of thing, that they can minister and help. The other thing Mary and I learned, and I could, because I teach in a divinity school and I'm trying to help men go into ministry, I tell them, don't, 
some of the most effective things you can do with people who've immediately lost someone very close to them, don't lay a verse on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they've, they've either got a verse, I mean, this mm -hmm. is the rainy day, they've had to have that verse. But to sometimes, to, the people that bust us most were the people who cried with us, mm -hmm. would just hug us and sit and cry. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to say at that time. Mm -hmm. But they're there. That's yeah. what the body does. It rallies to you. And other things I would say is unleash your people to a pastor. We had people come to our house when Erica died. A lot of people brought food. We had cakes all over the place. One woman showed up and said, I bet you've got 40 cakes. I'm bringing gallons of ice cream because that's what you're <laughs> going to need. Another man came in, he walked in the door and he said, and we were getting covered dishes and this and that. He said, I brought a sack full of uh, Subway sandwiches. Well, our son, who was 16 at the time, he called him blessed. You know, here's a guy that brought in deli sandwiches, you know. And, uh, so those were the kinds of things that, that made a, it was people just loving us. Mm -hmm. And then one woman comes in with a bucket and cleaning supplies, said, you're going to have a lot of out-of-town mm -hmm. guests. I'm cleaning your two right. bathrooms for you. You don't have time. Yeah. And to know that the body can rally and do these ordinary things that make all the difference. Yes. So thank you for your willingness to go into this topic and comfort those who are hurting with the comfort you've been shown by God. Would you pray for us as we close? I will. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your very spirit is still with us. You are our counselor, our comforter, the paraclete who walks alongside us. Lord Jesus, I thank you that this is not a myth. It's not a lofty idea. It is reality. So thank you for ministering to me and Mary, and I pray for myself and for all who will listen to this podcast, that they will know that you are real and that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And through you, we will be reunited with our loved ones. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.